Welcome to episode 34 of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Today's episode is brought to you by TechSite Builder. TechSite Builder is a hosted website builder that allows you to quickly and easily get a clean, professional, and effective website up and running for your computer business. Save time and frustration with TechSite Builder. Learn more at TechSiteBuilder.com. Today, we have Patrick Palmer on the show to talk about marketing your business in a small town. What can you do to win the trust of people in a town where everyone knows your name? Patrick will share tips on how to do that, plus some pretty ingenious ways he gets his business name out there during community events and gatherings. He's got lots of great lessons for businesses of all sizes. Plus, we're going to learn Patrick's connection to the Big Bopper and the film The Music Man. This is going to be an interesting one, folks. Stick around for all that and so much more coming up right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Computer Business Marketing Show. If you own or work in an IT services business, this is the place to learn how to get more clients, keep them happy, and grow your revenue. You can watch, download, and or subscribe to all show episodes at computerbusinessmarketing.com. You can also catch our live stream on Facebook. That's every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just be sure to like the Tech Site Builder page, click the following tab and then select see first so that every time we go live it'll jump to the top of your news feed and you won't miss it if you're there scrolling through you know cat pictures and baby photos uh we'll pop right up there and you can catch out catch the live stream it's awesome if you're here for the live stream because you can ask questions you can interact with the guest we just had some interactions here uh, earlier with uh, with patrick and um it's it's a lot of fun so definitely try to catch it live if you can otherwise you can subscribe to it uh, through itunes or all of the other places where you get your favorite podcasts. So today I'm excited to have uh, Patrick Palmer. He's going to talk to us about local advertising and all the tips and tricks that he's learned over the years on how to get your name out uh, to the local area. So how are you doing, Patrick? Hey, we're doing good. You know, I I just checked some emails the other day and we've been running and chasing each other around the block for about five years now on being here. And it's not that I put you off, it's just that I've kind of put you off. But uh, you know, we get busy, I get busy, you get busy, and then you've got guests lined up. And this. So finally, uh, the other day, I posted something on our page, and then you said, doggone it, we got to get you on here. And so here I am. So I, finally, it's an honor yeah. to be here. Yeah, because, you know, um, ever since I started the Computer Business Marketing Group, you're one of the first guys to join, and, and you've been real active in posting lots of great, you know, advice, and, and you share lots of pictures and talk about how you interact with your clients, and it's all really great stuff. And you know, I figured it'd, it'd be great to get you on here to kind of talk in person and, and show off some of your swag and, and all of that other stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, before we jump into that, I want to just do the um, shout out to our first sponsor, and that is TechSite Builder. You guys all know about TechSite Builder. It is the place to go to get your computer business website up and running. If your website is outdated, if you haven't updated it since, you know, the Geocities and, and Yahoo Pages days, uh, if it looks like it's stuck in the 90s, then, you know, now's the time to update it. And it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg, and it doesn't have to take you weeks and weeks to do it. Just head on over to techsitebuilder.com. Uh, we'll get you set up with a fully hosted website, and we have the website builder tools. So we make it really easy through video tutorials to get your website set up with all of the information you need to effectively sell your computer business and none of the uh, fluff and extra tools that you don't need that some of the other uh, platforms um, that we know that are out there will do that are set up for photographers and bakeries and, and law offices and every other business under the sun. Uh, TechSite Builder is built for computer businesses by a, a former computer business owner. And, uh, and so it's effective, it's fast, it's secure, and um, you can get your business uh, website created in a couple hours and then be on your way and run your business, go back to what you're good at, which is fixing computers, uh, you know, and, and selling your services. So um, go ahead and check that out if you haven't yet. If you're looking for a new website uh, and you need some help with that, check out techsitebuilder.com. All right, guys, uh, let's jump into the interview here with Patrick. So, you know, uh, Patrick, I, I know a lot of folks who listen to this already know you through through the business groups and stuff, but for, for the uninitiated, why don't you uh, let us know a little bit about yourself and your business? 
Well, I, I'm uh, a hometown guy here right in Hampton, Iowa. And uh, Hampton is 30 miles south of a uh, bigger town. Uh, and Hampton you know, is, is uh, uh, a smaller town. And the next biggest town is Mason City, Iowa. And as I was saying earlier before we start officially started, that if you were a fan of The Music Man, uh, we got trouble right here in River City. Mason City is known as River City. That's the town that Meredith Wilson, who, who wrote the movie The Music Man, is from. And so, did, they, did they film it there? Or, or no, you know? no, no. But uh, they have um, the band festival parade, and uh, um, all the stars have been there at least once, except Buddy Hackett never came back. So Buddy Hackett was in the original uh, Music Man. But... Uh, um, uh, all the all the stars from uh, Shirley Shirley Jones was has been back many times, and uh, so anyway, that's so when you hear there's trouble in River City or seventy six trombones or then there was you, they have the River City footbridge, they have uh, what we call uh, Music Man Square, uh, <laughs> and so it's it's Music Man that Mister Toot is the official dude, and his name is Mister Toot. And uh, like the, mas the city mascot or something? Yes, he is. He is. Yeah. And uh, nice. so anyway, then if you watch the movie La Bamba or you watch the movie The Buddy Holly Story, um, or if you ever heard the song uh, The Day the Music Died, uh, Bye Bye American Pie, uh, that song was written about The Day the Music Died, which was when Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, and Richie Valens got killed in a plane crash. That happened after they played the surf ballroom, and that's 35 miles from me. So that's kind of where... We're at in North Iowa, right off I-35. Um, a lot of, of music-related claims to fame. It, it is really, it's and, and bad. The, <laughs> yeah, the surf really brings in a lot of lot of music. I was, I've only they have Buddy Holly weekend. Well, it's not really called Buddy Holly. Weekend. The winter dance party that's coming up, and they'll have all kinds of you know stars there for that. And anyway, that's that's kind of where I'm located geog geographically. So anyway, I, I started 1996 was when I started the computer guy. I was also working at a radio station, then I quit there and went to a cell phone store and then quit there. And then in 19 and 2006, I went full time. So full time doing this on the road, I thought, well, well you know, I told my wife, I just had gotten married in, in April of 2006 and I quit my job at the cell phone store in July of 2006. And I said, you know, I'll do this for a while, see how it works. If I'm home by two in the afternoon to watch Dr. Phil and Oprah, I sell, I'll get a part-time job or I'll do something different. Anyway, right. it took off. And, and uh, to supplement the income at first, what I did was, if you've ever watched TV, like on Sunday morning, late Saturday night, you will see all these infomercials for Ron Popeil's uh, Pocket Fisherman and... Mm -hmm. Uh, hip hop abs, and they'll have somebody out there doing hip hop abs. <clears throat> I found out from one of my customers that that's all 1099 stuff, and they hire people hmm. via the web to hook their computer up and wear a headset like you've got on, and they have to have a landline phone. They plug that into the computer somehow, and every time the phone rings, a script pops up, and you just read the yeah. script. Hi, I was the it was it was a huge you know call center or something. No. No, oh, it's, so I did that, and it's twenty five cents a minute. So, <laughs> sir, is your name spelled P A T R I C K? Last name Palmer, P A L M E R. Yep. Correct. That ate up about thirty seconds. <laughs> so I learned that if you went slow, very direct, you could make good money. So twenty five cents a minute. Nice. You know, and that's that's kind of how I did it. So, um, if you ever watched American Idol. The nights they had American Idol Cares and you donated money to the Red Cross or you donated money to storm victims or whatever, we were the ones that answered those phones. Wow. Yeah. So how, how long have you been doing that? Do you still do that? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, did it, I did it for six months. I said, I'm going to do okay. it for six months. And, you know, because I was doing that, at, I'd get all the hours from like 11 o'clock at night till two in the morning. And that's why yeah. I did it. The wife was in bed. Anyway, uh, so I'd be downstairs talking about hip hop abs, asking women how much the weight they want to lose and, <laughs> and uh, all sorts of stuff. Cause that was in the script. You had to ask them how much the weight they want to lose. That was kind of embarrassing, but interesting. But, but uh, anyway, that's, that's how I did that anyway. So 
went on for that. So in, in 2009, like we all do, I don't know a computer tech out there that's, that's out there that says, man, if I had a storefront, I'd kill it. And so I convinced my wife, you know, I wasn't used to being, you know, I, I got married when I was 41. So I wasn't used to checking with anybody for stuff. I just did it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, better better make sure she's okay with this. So anyway, in 2009, I started, July 2009, started a storefront, hired an employee that, that was good, uh, very good, and hired him away from Staples. And the Staples had hired him away from Best Buy. And uh, he quit Best Buy because he didn't like the way Best Buy treated older people. And mm. that's he was my guy right then because yeah. nobody wants to see grandma get, get the raw end of the deal. Um, right. Or else that's they got a great, deal. that's a great client base to have yeah. as well, yeah. you know? And so anyway, that, you know, so he was really good. He was really good at upselling sometimes too good. I hate to say that we, I, I didn't want to gouge anybody, but I know there was people who felt that they were gouged and I, I that really still to this day eats me up. Um, so anyway, we, we coasted along on that. And I said, you know, to, to him, I said, if, if I'm on the road and you're back at the shop, that's the winner. If I'm at the shop and you're at the shop, we're not making money. Mm -hmm. And so there in, in about 2011, 2012, economy kind of went through a little dip. Um, and so anyway, I decided in 2012, you know, I'm just going to go back home. Uh, the building was going to be condemned. Uh, the landlord was a slumlord, and uh, in fact, he wouldn't pay the the bills. And so, I had a problem with a furnace one day, and and the and the heating and cooling company wasn't even going to come out unless I put the bill in my name. So I did, and they fixed it. But um, so anyway, right now it's it's an abandoned building in our downtown because it's just a slum. So anyway, I moved back home in 2012, and I just been. I've got a route. I go north two days a week. I go west a day. I go east a day, and I go south a day. And that kind of is how I shape my week up. Nice. And do you still have uh, someone working for you, or is it just just me? I'll, just I'll, you? Every once in a while, I might call him in for something, a second mm -hmm. opinion on something. But nah, I, I right. just do it myself. So, what were some of the things you did early on when you were first getting the business started to get it off the ground and get the word out and that kind of thing? You know, the handiest thing was I worked at a cell phone store. And so, um, I started dating my wife. Um, she also worked at the cell phone store in the corporate office in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And so we do the every other weekend thing. I'd go up there, she'd come down here. Well, I'd go up there and you know, there's only so much football you can watch because she is a big football fan. So there's only so much football you can watch. <clears throat> so I got to thinking, you know, <clears throat> I can do computer work up here on the weekends I'd get myself a Minnesota phone number, have it rerouted to my phone number, ring into my phone, and nobody would know the difference. And so anyway, I put an ad in this little flyer thing that was at all the gas stations in Minnesota, and um, uh, they'd, they'd start calling, and I'd never tell them where I was from. I said, I was just, I would give my, wife, uh, my girlfriend or now wife's address that they had to pick something up, but I didn't want to because she had some cats, and I didn't want them to get out. So she'd pick up computers for me during the week and either she'd take them back to her house when I got up there and fix them or she'd bring them to my house. And while she was here, I'd just kind of zip through them and fix them. And so I, I was doing pretty good money that way. The, the thing that killed it was smarty pants me decided to put my website on the advertisement. Well, they got on the website and they said, he's not from Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, after that, and then yeah. shortly after that, the wife moved down and we got married and the rest is history. But, um, right. so my, you know, the, the handiest thing about my phone number is real, I, I say it's the easiest phone number in North Iowa is four, two, zero, one, two, three, four. And since I was a cell phone store employee, I saw all the numbers that came across in, in like Excel spreadsheets. And so yeah. here come the 1200 batch through. I said, Oh, Oh, well, one, two, three, four is available. I think I'll just take that. So anyway, my boss was upset cause she wanted it. And I, I got it for her first, had it all done in the way we went. So yeah, that's, no, it helps to have a, an easy to remember number. And right, people right. don't think about that. Right, and so um, I do have. I have my. I still have a landline here at the house. It rolls to my cell phone number. My work 
where I had the downtown shop. I knew people. And that's the thing about it. And I don't advertise in a phone book. Well, phone books still exist. And if, if a phone book is five years old, it still has your name in it. And it still has your phone number in it. So anyway, uh, I still have my work phone number, 1936. That rolls into my uh, my cell phone. So then I expanded to another two other towns. Um, so I bought local cell phone prefix numbers for those towns mm. and then used VoIPO and VoIP them in. And I think that's uh, $72 for every – it's $35 a year or something like that. And then um, this competitor of mine was just really kind of a jerk. Well, he went out of business, and I found out some other guy actually owned the, the account that the phone number was on. So I gave that guy um, 250 bucks, and now I own that phone number too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, That's once great, you buy it, one, yeah. here's, a, here's a tip. Here is a magic million-dollar tip. Okay. Once you buy a competitor's phone number, I don't care what you say. You just bought his business. Yeah. Or yeah. I, I shouldn't say his. I, I, I don't mean to be just a guy-only thing because there are a lot of great, great gal techs out there. So once you buy a competitor's phone number, you just bought their business. I bought that business from him for 250 bucks. I didn't need a data list. I didn't need Blue Sky. Right. Everybody who calls a number, computer guy, can I help you? Yeah, that's great. And so, I like the the um, idea of buying local phone numbers or you know getting local phone numbers of the the cities that you're going to serve right um because that that way they see a local phone number that they're calling instead of you know a couple right. of towns over or whatever right um that's that's great advice so um you know fast forward to 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 these days uh what are some of the things you're doing as far as just uh marketing maybe some new things that you're trying that are working well for you um one thing i do well, i just got done sending out my christmas cards yes. and that's uh my I don't know if that's straight. Can you read that or is it backwards? Oh, uh, no. I can read oh, that. Okay. Yep. Anyway, uh, dashing, dashing through, through the, the snow. Yeah. yeah. And then that's that inside. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I ordered those a long time ago. I, I ordered these from Vistaprint. I'm embarrassed to say that. <laughs> yeah. um, and I saw somebody on the internet today say they were going to order wedding invitations. And this gal works at, at the Buffalo Wild Wings place. And I said to her, I said, you know, how many times does Vistaprint come in there to eat lunch? Right. Well, none. I said, then, then shop local. Try it. Try at least give the local people a chance. So anyway, uh, I did that. So then um, every once in a while, I mail out, usually in the spring of the year, I, I mail out these cards. It's uh, like a little uh, uh, time to get your yearly checkup card out. Right. Uh, especially for the folks that say, well, see you next year. You know, and they think they just have me come around once a year like the furnace guy is going to you know, fix <laughs> yeah. it. Um, do you send those out to only existing clients or do you have like a mailing list of? Mostly existing ones and mostly the older ones that I know who just need that gentle reminder of, you know. Now, this one I send out <clears throat> to just a lot of people I see. And this one, you know, the immediate call to action, give me a call, blah, blah, blah. Catches your eye. Yeah, it catches your eye type thing. I had this when I had the shop downtown. We had a little loss leader. It really wasn't a loss leader because we did it for free. It was, and I still don't understand why more shops don't do this. Every computer that came into the shop, uh, we gave it a free inspection and tune-up. Now, you know as well as I do that free inspection and tune-up includes running malware bytes on it, running maybe some sort of virus scanner. There's not a computer out there that doesn't have some malware on it when it comes into the shop or else it wouldn't be there. Yeah. So to do something for free, give them this free, makes a warm, fuzzy feeling like we had a 20 checklist of free stuff we did. We checked, you know, this, that, RAM, dry, hard drive, whatever. And um, so then out of, you know, I was open downtown for four, nine, 10, 11, 12, four years. Out of four years, three people said, I want my free inspection and tune-up. Thank you very much. I'll take my machine right. home. Yeah. And the rest of the time, they were they were paying the money. Yeah, I think that I think you're right. More people need to do that because mm. basically what you're doing is you're inviting them to come into your shop so you, or to you know give you their computer so you can show them why you need to fix it or why right. you need to work on it. And, and Which, upsell RAM. Yeah. We, we sold a ton of RAM. Um, <laughs> we, we sold just a ton of you know stuff that was just upsell stuff and. Um, that's you know that, that that was good. Now again, 
what I hated to do was gouge people. I think a couple people got gouged uh, and I felt you know bad about it. And the one guy, I bought him a gift certificate to the Mexican restaurant down the street. I felt so bad you know, for him. Hey, I said, we had a drawing <laughs> this month and you won. You know? nice. Oh, Pat, I've never had Best Buy do that. You know, Well, of course not. Nice. Um, so, so that's but, interesting. So you thought maybe the, the customer would feel like they were getting, you know, taken advantage of and, and to kind of uh, nip that in the bud before it became a problem. Yeah, you, it was right near the end of the month. And you could tell that it was a major, I, I think there was, you know, that was back in the days when you could charge people 300 bucks just to fix their computer. And, oh, it probably needs it. You know, now you say 300 bucks and say, ah, I'll get another one, you know, or something like that. Um, so I think we hit them for about 350 bucks. And I, I, I didn't want to admit we were wrong in charging that because they had issues, right. but I felt bad. And so yep. end of the month I said, Hey, you know, we have a, uh, every customer that walks in the door, we put them in a drawing. I said, you want 50 bucks. Oh, great. And those are the Mexican restaurant. I always see them at anyway. And so anyway, that's what I did. That's awesome. Um, also one of the things you're, you're well known for like in, in the computer business marketing group is you know, having your, your business logo everywhere and on lots of different things. And yeah. we always see you sharing pictures of that and stuff and uh, <laughs> nice little product placement there. If people can't see. Oh, oh yes. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Nice. And yes. The, I, the other side. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, what, how, how do you, uh, what are your thoughts around that? How do you use that strategically to your advantage? Do you just leave free stuff for people all the time or, or what is, no, um, the, first of all, the, the local um, promotional place in town loves me because uh, <laughs> I, I do a lot of stuff. Well, we had a, um, the cups here came out of an idea one night that at the computer guy, uh, they would show movies Tuesday through Sunday. Monday was a special night where they would show a classic movie of some sort. And... Um, uh, they would take a sponsor. They'd like pull in a movie that was either classic or it'd been out for a while, but anyway, they got it back. So anyway, that one movie that was about Facebook. I can't remember what it was called. Maybe it was called okay. Facebook, whatever. Anyway, um, I sponsored the movie that night and it cost, two, yeah, it cost me 250 bucks to sponsor it. They opened the theater. Everybody who wanted to come, it was free tickets. They, they did have to get, come to my shop to get a, a ticket, but oh. it was free. And anyway, so I thought, you know, um, they should, everybody got a free, free, uh, glass of pop. And so I put in a free glass of pop and I, so I ordered glasses. The problem was, was I had to special order lids cause they couldn't uh, serve pop. Without but anyway, I found lids that would fix it or, <laughs> or fit it. And, and then we had, uh, the pop. So anyway, it was that one re free refill and, you know, That's they great. got a price, price break on about a thousand of them. So I ordered about a thousand of them and. And so anyway, we did that. But um, then uh, uh, also um, just today I sold, uh, uh, I have gift cards that are uh, $10 off gift cards. And a little rule with those, you can use up to five at a time because most time I give these out, this is good. There's always somebody in your town, unfortunately, that has a sick child, maybe that cancer, leukemia, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, look like the good guy, look like the, the better person give them 50 bucks in gift cards. Right. Um, your name's going to be on all the sponsorship stuff. Hey, and you know, you're going to look like a real good person and you should be. I mean, that's just one of those deals. Um, I don't really do the, the sponsorship of the prom and the yearbooks. Uh, I, I, I don't do those, but with sick kids or somebody who needs something like that, I'll be glad to throw them some gift cards and right. just, you know, it, it's 10 bucks. I mean, it, uh, creatively you can make that back up i'm i'm, I'm not saying well you got to give away the farm on this but but gift card no big deal yeah and and you know i mean the the way a gift card should work is you know someone purchases it as a gift for someone right so yeah, yeah. it could be an existing client who who mm -hmm. knows of you they purchase it give it to someone who might not know of you right and all of a sudden now you have a new referral coming in uh, yeah i get these from a lot of uh kids or younger people who are just annoyed of teaching their parents how to run something. Uh, yes. And so, Pat, give me 50 bucks worth. Okay, here you go. Right. And, I'll, and I'll sell them 50 bucks worth. But it, like I said, if you do, if there is a charity in town, um, like for example, we have something called Coaches Versus Cancer, and they raise money for cancer. Some of it's kept locally where we pay for 
Um, if you need a ride to the doctor, if you need meals out, if you're going to or from chemo, uh, you know, the, the person who's has the cancer usually can't drive because they just got something done to them. So a family member or a volunteer has to drive them. Here, here's a gift card to a pita pit, uh, 15 bucks, have, have meal on us, you know, and then it makes them want to help volunteer to take somebody there. So anyway, I, as a sideline, I collect autographs, uh, baseball, football, all movie stars, a lot of movie stars. Um, and so I'll donate autographs once in a while and I'll have them write hashtag cancer sucks or strike out cancer or something like that. If they're a baseball player or whatever. So I pay for that. And, you know, that's just a, a donation I can write off at the end of the year as well. But yeah, uh, it does make you look like a good person and I'm a good that's, person, but right. But I mean, you, you, uh, there, there's so many different, uh, angles to that because right. you, of course you're you're helping the local community and members of the community and you just want to do good for for mm -hmm. the people around you um and, and you know and people see that i mean right. and, and the word spreads you know hey yeah. this guy helped me out and yeah. and so it, it helps you it helps them and it's kind of a win-win situation and i mean and that's for a town you know we're in a town of 4200 people i mean that everybody knows everybody this yep. that that philosophy probably wouldn't work in a town of a hundred thousand Maybe it wouldn't work in a town of 50,000. I, mean, I don't know, but I've done it for a town of 30,000 in Mason City, just north of me. I've given donated stuff. I don't do much, like I said, I don't do much for proms or yearbooks or Little League teams because if you did that, you'd, you'd be inundated. But I, I do special things that, especially if, if they're a customer's kid, hey, I'll help you out. Um, one thing I want to talk about, Chamber of Commerce real quick, uh, because in small town Chamber of Commerce, that, that's very important. And... Um, my philosophy on the Chamber of Commerce is if you, and this is, a, this is another one of those million dollar secrets, uh, what I do when I go to a Chamber event, I work the door. I take names, I help them fill out stuff, registration table, you got it, here's your name tag. Number one, I learn their name. Right. Hi, I'm Pat, how you doing? Oh, I'm Ted, how you doing? I learn their name, and I can call them by their first name later on down the road. Hey, Ted, I saw you at the chamber event. How'd you like that? You know, but when you work the door, especially put a logo on your shirt. I, this is I'm sure I didn't have a logo on, but anyway, um, I should have for tonight. I should have had that. <laughs> right. um, but that gets you in front of if you've got a chamber dinner, chamber banquet, quarterly coffee. Uh, that gets people through the door, and you can always glad hand everybody and yeah. slap them on the shoulder. You know that that sort of thing. Uh, I really like that. Work, work the door. Be the gatekeeper. Yep, that, that's a great idea because um, everyone has to go through you. So yeah, yeah, uh, your yeah. name's right on the list. Um, next, if you have a deal where, um, let's say at this chamber event, there's a drawing, register to win. Well, why don't you sponsor the pads, hmm. the drawing pads? Great. And wow. what it has on there, by the way. Two, uh, three things. My computer has issues. I need a new computer. I need a new website. Huh. And nice. so, uh, yeah, hey, when you're done with all those registration slips, can I keep them? Sure, I don't nice. want them. And so anyway, that's just a, another one of those million-dollar secrets there. That's great. Um, next, um, and this is probably why I'm known for a lot because I, I, I've done it, oh, gee whiz, since probably 2010, is uh, I throw these, – these are one-dollar business cards. And they're also known as a Frisbee. But but when I throw them out, they're $1 business cards. <laughs> yep. And so um, it has my name, phone number, and website on them. And I do, last year I did, I would say, 15, 16 parades. And I sent my wife reluctantly to three. And um, so I, I had two vehicles, have two vehicles that are lettered up. And, uh, you know, they go crazy over these. Now we have one, we have our big local in town here, fair parade. It's a county fair and it's, it's the third biggest, third most voted by the fair board association of the world, the third best fair in our state. And so anyway, we have a huge amount of people there. And so what I do for that is I write on the back of here, I number these zero, zero to 99 hmm. and then I throw them out. Well, I've already predetermined. I pick. I pick three numbers, the t and and they have. I throw these out. Let's, let's say six o'clock on a Tuesday night. These get thrown out in the parade. Hundred frisbees. 
So then immediately on my Facebook page, I post number 62. Mm -hmm. If you have number 62, you have 24 hours. You have to have six o'clock the next night to bring that to me or give me a call and get that to me. And I'll give you a hundred dollar bill. Hmm. And then if you don't do it that night, then it goes another 24 hours and that's $50. And wow. it goes another 24 hours and that's $25. And then if that goes another 24 hours, then everybody just got a nice Frisbee. Right. So do you, do you get so, responses from that? Oh, there, we didn't do it last year because my wife uh, did the parade and I, I went to a twins game. Uh, and so anyway, she wasn't really happy, but anyway, Frisbee, Frisbee, you know, just people screaming and running. So I mean, people know ahead of time. Well, I did it once after the first time I did it. Right. Everybody knew. And man, nice. my Facebook engagements were like off the roof. Everybody's yeah. coming in because I just posted it once. And, uh, Back in the day when you had all those tabs, when Facebook had tabs, yeah. I, I'd hide it underneath there. I'd make a tab mm -hmm. called the winning number. And uh, uh, you had to, at that point in time, you, when it first started, you had to like my page to get to that tab. And so you had to give it a like, and then you could see the tab. Now it's a little different. So Nice. Uh, how, how many Facebook uh, likes do you have at this point? I got, well, and, and that's another time. I just like hit 2,900 today. Wow. And that's, and that's, uh, I was just, uh, man, that's a great segue. And we didn't even rehearse this. Um, <laughs> I was just at a Facebook event the other night and she was going to give a, a class on Facebook advertising, more like the funnel situation. First of all, the first step was get 10,000 likes on your page. Wow. And so I'm sitting there scratching my head. <laughs> and this guy, they do these testimonials after you, you, we got to see these videos, these testimonials. I was helped to get 10,000 likes to my opinion. You know, this guy is reluctant as heck, you know. So he was there. I said, so I said, tell me. I said, how'd you do it? Well, I can't really tell you how I did it because that's part of the course. Okay. Hmm. Uh, are those people, are those 10,000 oh, people soon to be clients of yours or are they from India and China? Right. Well, they're from, a lot of them are from India. I said, that's no good. You, you just spoiled the whole apple cart because that ruins it. I yeah. seen, I've seen people with computer repair places with 10,000 likes, or, yeah, 10,000 likes. And all they do is go through and leave one stars. They write profanity on your wall. Uh, they, they completely mess up the whole analytics of it. Cause if you send something out and you know, a thousand people see it, Oh, well, that's 10%, but that might not be the right 10%. Oh, well, nobody in town right. saw it. Well, yeah, yeah uh, downtown uh, Nepal, India, yeah, they, they probably saw it. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's I agree more. I mean, I, I'd rather have, you know, 50 followers who are people who would, you know, buy my services or local right. who are interested in what I'm saying right. versus a thousand people, you know, who couldn't care less or just liking pages because they yeah. get paid for it. And so I really think that the the page, the pages I, I have are people that are interested. And, and right now um, I've started another business with a, a friend of mine. I will get in that a little bit. And so we're doing a little bit more social media stuff. I'm really right now posting because it's the holidays. There are a lot of hoaxes out there right now. You see the Kohl's coupon, the Dollar General coupons, and they're all bogus. And, you know, I had one lady argue with me, that coupon is real. I said, okay, then I want you to print that coupon out, and I want to take my video camera, and let's go to Dollar General, and I want you to use it. And I'm going to record it, and we're going to have a fun time. And then she gets back, oh, I took it to Dollar General. It wasn't any good told you so, you know, so yeah. I do more, you know, I use that, that 80, 20 selling information thing. I, I put out more information in the 80% than I actually do buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Cause right. they know me, you know, they, they see it, but, uh, so, so that kind of um, leads me to my last two questions here. Number one, what are some of the things you're going to be focusing on in 2018 or just your ideas of kind of the future of, of marketing computer businesses? And then the second question is, I know you are, um, you're, you're doing some, some online classes around some different stuff right. uh, that um, folks could, might be interested in. So maybe talk about both of those things. Sure. Um, first of all, I, I did get these printed up. These uh, are good at parties. Uh, yes. 
especially out on the farm, everybody has to have a can koozie. And so I take these, I get invited to several, you know, hog cookouts in Iowa. We have hog cookouts here. Uh, so I take these to the hog cookouts and barbecues and whatnot. And, and they, they do real well. Um, another thing I use is, um, cause everybody, it seems like today, everybody's got a refrigerator. They still haven't, you know, they haven't done anything away with a refrigerator. So I do order business size magnets and usually in the winter time, cause I'm wearing a heavier coat. Um, I'll have magnets in my pocket and they'll say, well, Pat, we sure have enjoyed you being here and fixing our computer. I said, well, I think there's something wrong with your refrigerator. And they'll say, oh, really? What? And I'll say, it doesn't have one of my magnets on it. And then I'll put my magnet on it. So they get a kick out of that. And then uh, then I do subscribe to these. Um, um, these are multi-business magnets, and they get mailed out to every home in, in areas. And I really – these pay for themselves right off the bat. Uh, you know, it's just like they, they stick them on the fridge and they leave them there for 20 years. And even if you advertise once on one, I've gone to places where I hadn't advertised in a town on their magnet for five years and they still have the old magnet on their fridge. It's kind of like the phone book situation. You know, it's still right. there. still there. So um, I do have a, a brochure uh, that uh, is also available that I, I had printed up a long time ago. Um, uh, feature okay. feature more on my storefront there, but anyway, it's still still good. Um, goals that I'm I'm probably looking at in the next year. I, I need to get my website a refresh. I've got the problem with doing computer repair is you get to know a lot of web designers, and so web designers, I'll be quite frank, are some of the crookedest people I've ever met. Um, uh, not you. Not <laughs> Speaking you, not, to not, a web designer. Not, not <laughs> no, I, I agree. And and most of my clients come from those cro crooked web designers right. who, you know, who gouge want, them, give yeah, them they, just a, a WordPress template that you can set up in yeah. five minutes and then are never to be heard from again. Yeah, and they want they so want common. half down. You know, they want, well, I need half down. And then they might do something like in the first week. And then if you call them again, hey, yeah, where's the rest of my money? Well, where's the rest of my work, you know? And so yeah. it's that constant battle. And, and so anyway, um, I can't, you know, that's the problem is, is get online and I'm going to have my website built by somebody. And you know that the 25 other web designers I know in the area, well, you didn't build your website with me. I'm not doing business with you anymore. Well, mm. you yeah. know, that's, that's a tough, as I'm a kind of a, you buy from me, I buy from you kind of guy. And so that's kind of the, <clears throat> the thing there. Um, one of the thing uh, that we've also started, like I said earlier, my I, back in March, uh, Gal, I, I do a lot of social media business with that we work together a lot. <clears throat> we've done a lot of classes, a lot of speaking. Just kept bumping into each other here and there. I said, you know, we ought, to, we ought to do something together. And she said, yes, we should. So we came together and we started Homegrown Social Media. And that's homegrownsocialmedia.com if you're on the internet. Um, and so I don't want to go out there Here's my philosophy on it. I don't care about your pizza place. I don't care about your flower shop. I don't care about your water conditioning place. I'm not going to post the pizza special tonight is sausage and pepperoni. I, that's not what I want to do. I'll teach you to do it, and I'll teach you to do it pretty well. And I'll teach you to do it in a way that's not going to cost you a whole lot because I think once you get the Facebook page set up the way you want it, and the way that works the best uh, for everybody um, doesn't have to cost a lot. And you don't have to keep throwing money at something uh, to get a good return. I, I see these people doing Facebook Lives. Every time you turn around, there's another somebody doing Facebook Live. It's like, you know, save the live stuff. I don't know, Matthew, do you remember a, a pro wrestler named Andre the Giant? Remember Andre the Giant? Okay. Oh, Andre, the Giant, Andre the Giant used to wrestle in the same Coliseum four or five times a week. Every week, he was at the same Coliseum. Finally, nobody came to see him anymore. Well, he wasn't special. So the, the McMahon family bought the contract of Andre the Giant and took him around the world in a different complex every night and packed the place. They made that, that experience special. And so... Um, when I, if there's a tornado, yeah, I'll put it on Facebook live. If there's something that's not as valuable 
if that can be watched in two weeks and have the same amount of value to it, I'll just record it and make sure it's done right. There's no uh, um, and uh, type of things in it. Do it right and, and make it look professional and just stutter and stammer through it. And of course, it, if I see another video shot from a car, inside of a car, where somebody's <laughs> too lazy to have a decent background, this background here, um, I, I made a studio in my home. Behind this wall, I may pan the camera around here. Uh, this is just a seven foot wide by six foot tall wall. It's hung from the ceiling with eye hooks. Okay. I didn't want to redo okay. the whole room. I just cheated and got this for yeah. two hundred bucks. And um, yep. So we if, don't have to if, see like your your cluttered bookshelf or yeah. whatever that's in the background. Everybody yeah. has a cluttered bookshelf in the background. I should I, what I was going to do was I thought about getting a plant to put over here really just to kind of mock you a little bit, but I didn't have any, <laughs> I didn't have any marijuana like you've got. So anyway, um, I thought, uh, that would be kind of cool, but I didn't. So, um, and, and I could probably, when I shoot videos, I, I superimpose my logo up in the corner. And so I, I just, I just do it. I try and do it right. I mean, that's the radio guy in me is a uh, computer guy commercial take 72. If it takes 72 takes to get it right, then do that. I mean, uh, you don't see them on TV, uh, Crest toothpaste, uh, uh, you know, they do it right. And so I, I think, right. you know, you do have to have a natural flow of stuff too. I, I get that. You, you want to, you know, you want to be seen as a, as a professional. So yeah. the stuff you put together, your videos and things should be professional. Right. Yeah, and, and these yeah. people just, you know, they, they just, I, I, I made several videos, and I think I posted them where I mock people that did that. I, like I was in the car wash, right. and I did a video in the car wash. And I did one, the, the coolest one was when I was on the merry-go-round, and I kept going around, I videotaped myself, and uh, nice. I said, stand still. Yeah, I get these funny. people, they, they, I'm about ready to have a damn seizure when I watch this video. It's like, oh my God, stand still. Uh, so anyway, we so teach. Is this, the, this is the type of stuff that you teach, yeah, in the yeah. class. Yep. And the people that go live yeah. and they say, yeah, just waiting for a couple more people to get on the feed. Yeah, just waiting for a couple more. You know, they, they do that for 10 minutes. It's like, my God, you're, you're going to have, you know, we're goldfish. When we come to watching videos on Facebook, we're goldfish. Five seconds, six seconds. Yeah. If it's not if it's not there, we're got. done. If it's, Hi, I'm Pat Palmer, the computer guy. I'm here to talk about, oh, they're done. I mean, they don't want to hear your name. They know your name. They can see it on the screen. It's said Patrick yeah. right there. Uh, do you have a problem with your computer right now? You know, hit them, hit them apart now. And um, nice. so that's uh, great. So I'll, and, and, um, I've got a, I've got a link to, um, to that, uh, that program, um, the homegrown social. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes, and I put that in the uh, the live video feed here as well. So if you guys want to check that out, um, definitely do that. Uh, we're running out of time here, so do you have any parting words or any uh, last words of advice for folks? Maybe because uh, I know a lot of folks who listen to this podcast um, maybe are starting off part time or, or trying to grow their business and, and might be struggling. What are what are some words of advice you have for those folks? You've got to know your target audience. I see so many people said, I'm going to get in the IT business. Well, for who? Well, I'm going to start out the biggest corporation in town. Um, and they've already got somebody. Oh, well, you know, as okay, you know, start, you know, the small corner business in your town doesn't have a person. If they've got, if they have a person, it's probably a nephew, cousin, son, daughter, whatever. Start small. It doesn't have to start small. You can always go up. But if you're if you're right. you know going big every time you're gonna get shot down a lot I think uh, but you know these corner hardware stores and you know small town stuff don't be scared of those people I mean and treat people like you want to be treated for God's sakes I mean that's that's use the golden rule with this sort of stuff I mean I just I, I get after these people that run all these you know managed service providers I had to deal with one in Hampton here they 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 got in they took everybody's money. And then the first sign of problems, man, they were down the road. They got a job somewhere else because all the money ran out hmm. because they'd, you know, they, they got all the signups and they just took off kind of like Harold Hill and the music man tying that back. Right. In. <laughs> uh, and so then I had to pick up, I mean, I don't mind putting fires up, but these were like California forest fires. I mean, wow. some of them like, I don't know. He didn't, he told me my data was backed up, but it wasn't backed up. And the guy says, yeah, I told you she got an email on that. That, that doesn't help anything. 
Right. I mean, get in there and find us. So anyway, I mean, it comes, it all comes down to, you know, caring about your clients, taking care of them, building relationships. And I think you, you've been doing that. You do that very well um, with, you know, everything you're doing in social media and everything you're doing with the charities. And, and uh, you know, I think your, your customers and potential customers can tell that you really do care about them. And that, that goes a long way. Yeah. So I, I, I really appreciate the time here, Matthew. Like I said, it's been five years. We've been chasing each other's tails and, and I really hope that people have, have gotten a little bit out of it. If they, if they have it, well, no, tough luck. No, uh, <laughs> email me or, you know, click the link through the show or whatever. Hi, everyone. Get, he's got a hot link me or my name or my business name or whatever. Send me a, a message, uh, like my page, uh, and, uh, and that, but no, if you have any questions, reach out. I'm more than accessible. Uh, well, I'm not probably for the next hour and a half because it's my wife's birthday and uh, she's not really happy of me doing this right now. Oh, okay. and, but anyway, that. once she gets her gift, she'll, she'll be all right. But anyway, um, if don't hesitate to call, you know, I, for uh, goodness sakes, I've got the easiest number in North Iowa at uh, 641-420-1234. Uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people on the phone. I do a lot of driving. I about 35,000 miles a year on the road and my routes between here and there and everywhere. And, um, so uh, I just encourage people to get all of me. Awesome. Well, thanks. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of great stories and insights, and, and we appreciate you being on the show. Hey, guys, if you want to, you know, um, hang out with both Patrick and I, head on over to the uh, the Facebook group, the Computer Business Marketing Facebook group. Um, I run it over there, and we, we have always lots of good discussions about different marketing and advertising techniques and different things you can try, both, you know, old school stuff uh, and new school like uh, social media and websites and all of that stuff. So check that out. You can find it on Facebook by searching for computer business marketing, or we have a new fancy URL now. You can go to techsitebuilder.com slash group, and that'll take you right over there. Um, and we'd love to have you in there and get some of your insights. Uh, you know, whoever's listening to this, we'd love to get your insights and in, in, uh, marketing your computer business as well. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Let's uh, keep the conversation going. Head on over to the computerbusinessmarketing.com and let us know what you think in the comments there under the show notes. Also, that's where you can find links to all the things we've been talking about. Uh, Patrick's uh, social media course, as well as his business um, website and, and Facebook page and all that stuff you can find links to there. Also, don't forget to join us um, on iTunes or Stitcher if you listen to this podcast. Uh, please give us a shout out or a review on those platforms. We lo I love to hear your feedback and every comment you leave about the podcast helps it to get found better on those platforms as well. And finally, don't forget to check out our sponsor, TechSite Builder at TechSiteBuilder.com. Well, thank you for checking out another episode of the Computer Business Marketing Show. My name is Matthew Rodella saying here's to your success. Your success.